This is my empire. My empire of blood. I want him dead. I want his whole world turned to dust. My enemies will be coming for me. Even the worst kind of brutality has its place. I am trying to be civil here! Looking for a couple of brothers. You're gonna start a war. I know, right? Their souls became a blood well. That blood could satisfy your need to kill. What if I like to kill? A hit and a heist. You're about to see the rise of a new lord. I've waited a thousand years for this. It's gonna be a hell of a reunion. From Dusk Till Dawn, Season 2, Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Available on Charter, Cox, DirecTV, Dish Network, Sling TV, Time Warner Cable, and Xfinity. Hey welcome, guys. welcome to all of you. Thank you. It's a good-looking cast assembled here. Yeah, yeah, we, we, uh, we, cleaned, up, we cleaned up okay today. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a great time to talk about the series. Um, obviously, Comic-Con is happening right now, uh, as well as this weekend. Uh, and in the series itself, there's so much going on right now. Last night's, or this week's episode was crazy. Yeah. Uh, we had two big deaths. Uh, obviously, Danny Trejo's regulator is no longer with us. And then Uncle Eddie is dearly departed as well. Yeah, Spoilers. yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> they, they should be caught up by now. But uh, yeah, like, tell me about filming that episode and knowing that it would be the last one with those actors. Um, well, let's start with the death first. Um, to just to liven it up, you know? Um, that was it, was, it was really fun to play, obviously, because you know, the stakes get heightened. And uh, at this point, seven, seven episodes into the second season, we all are really gelled with the work we're doing together. But, it was a huge bummer, man. I mean, we all felt the same way when we showed up for the first season. We're like, okay, we're working with Robert Rodriguez. Where's Danny Trejo? Right. You know, and we're like looking under tables, checking <laughs> doors. We're like, this dude is popping out at some point. But uh, so when he finally showed up on the second season, we were just so excited to get to work with him. He's such an icon, especially in Robert's universe. So yeah. um, it was it was a bummer to see him go. But you know, the arc of his character and the way it happens in the story was so fun and so cool. Uh, it was uh, it was kind of special. And then. Losing Jeff was a, was a huge bummer because we had a great time. Yeah, you had a lot of scenes with him. I, yeah, I got to have the majority of my work with Jeff Fahey right. in episode seven. We kind of had a couple little teasers, a couple little smaller scenes, and then seven was when we really started to kind of get rocking. And then it's also the episode where he, he dies. So I was, I was glad to be able to have all that time with him at the Titty Twi or sorry, Jackknife Jeds. Right. And we kind of go bar. undercover. We run a job together, which is very cool. Um, and then with Danny, it was so interesting because it feels like Danny has been a part of the show since the beginning. He was actually at the yeah. premiere of our show in Austin at South by Southwest in 2014. And for me, like, I met him. I would see him around. I would see him around. I would see him around. But if you see the scene where he, he dies, that's the first time he and I were ever together on set at the same time. I, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, DJ got to work with him, but I only, I think... No, Maybe I did you, have scenes, you yeah, had scenes with him. He did. Okay. Everyone but you. I, everybody but me. I had <laughs> one day on set with uh, with Danny, and it was to see him off. Yeah. Did he impart any wisdom while he was there? Because obviously he's worked with Rodriguez for so long. So, and you guys are still in this show. So he just spends he, his time. Like he's on, he's the sweetest guy in the world. Like the curious. nicest guy. I don't want to ruin his image because he's, he's such a badass. But he's the kindest guy in the world. So he's a consummate professional. So he spends his time, you know, just being a nice. Guy and trying to get A's at a Merriam off of <laughs> when we're not shooting, when we're not shooting scenes, so. Yeah. Um, so in the last three episodes, it looks like, uh, you know, Santa Nico is very wanted right now. Uh, a lot of people are after her head. Uh, what can you tell us about her role in the next three episodes? Well, um, the development of the character has been amazing. I'm, I'm so happy that Robert gives women such strong personalities. Um, that's, I think, for for actresses and, and for any woman watching the show is very empowering to be able to see these type of characters. And so, she, you know, she she's a driven character. She knows what she's going for. But what I like in this show is that there's no good or bad characters. It's just basically real people going for their interests and just finding 
people in the way that have the same points and how that changes, you know? I, I mean, people that have watched the first season, um, you see the relationship between Richie and Santanico and you've seen how it's getting deteriorized by, throughout the second season. And you know, when, when certain uh, interests have this like shock, you know, he, he's more interested in gaining money, you know, he's getting a little bit drunk in power and she still has that kind of like vengeance thing to her. And that's what I like about the character that even though she has the, the, the she's capable of having all that power and, and she knows that if she kills Malbato, she does this whole thing, she will be able to control this whole empire, but she doesn't want that. Right. She just wants justice. And so that's really interesting about this evil character because she seems so evil, you know, at the beginning. And she, but she's a real character. She's honest, you know, she, she uses, she has to do whatever it has, she has to do to be able to get there, you know. If that is taking women and selling them, you know, like she does with Paloma and these whole characters and it's kind of dark relationship or, you know, whatever it takes to be able to, sometimes, you know, you gotta sing certain ships in order to make a whole movement. And so that's how she thinks, you know. Sometimes you gotta chop some heads in, in, in order to get to the Cut big one. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. Of, like she's saying, <laughs> we're kind of at the point where um, everybody's agendas are lining coming up. to a head yeah. and lining up for this kind of conclusion of this season, so. Yeah. I was gonna say, it must be exciting because you've spent so much of the past two seasons kind of apart on different paths, especially uh, the brothers. Yeah. Uh, and now you guys are not only in the same page, in the same room. Yeah. Um, maybe have different agendas a little bit. Um, it seems like maybe Seth has uh, some ulterior motives still. But Yeah, uh, I think, you know, it, it's like one of those things. Like, the, like these two guys have, <laughs> they, they have a codependent relationship in every possible way, you know. Um, they, they obviously do not function as well apart as they do together, but you know, their, their worlds have split in such a crazy, uh, detailed way that they're entirely different, entirely different people, but um, they're at a point now, and it, you know, it was by design to split them up so, so definitively in the beginning of the second season, so it's been really fun kind of finding the rhythm of these characters on their own, because obviously you know, they're so well documented and fleshed out as a unit, you know, in the film and in the series. So that was what was uh, so exciting about the second season for us. Uh, Gecko them up. was actually splitting them up and split, you know, and the same for Santanico, like creating an entirely new storyline. So um, yeah, because the first season is more like just them and we all kind of like get connected to them. But it's just an one liner kind of storyline. And this is more mixed. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I mean, it's, it's really cool to see everybody split apart, mm -hmm. define their own interests on their own, and then as they're coming together, it's like, you know, what does the new relationship look like between these two guys? Like, you know, they, they have a similar goal right now, but what's gonna happen if they achieve it, and you know, who's gonna take advantage of their edge, and, and everybody's shown, it, we, I always say that in the show, there's no good guys. There's no like true altruism. There's, there's bad guys, there's worse guys, and there's evil guys, you know? So any, anything, anything could possibly happen, so. That's a bleak outlook. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously uh, last week we, saw, we said goodbye to, uh, I'll call it the twister bar. I'm not sure if I can say that the whole thing here. That yeah. was I already did, so <laughs> I, I think. <laughs> well, you're allowed to, I think. But uh, yeah, and I, you know, obviously you guys blew it up on the show, but you also blew it up in real life, right? Did Robert Rodriguez actually just blow up the set? I mean, yeah, if you see the, if you see the footage, that's, a, that's, that's an explosion. Real explosion. That's, a, that's <laughs> you, a, a, you know, in the show, it's a, it's a place. Uh, in real life, it's a, it's a yeah. set, but that's real fireballs and a, a real... But Robert was shocked, a, a too. Practical, practical... <laughs> he was. He was, he was scarred, you know? It's such an... Such an epic part of the show and I, a part of his heart is there so it was so cute to see him like we're gonna blow up the twister and he was just like we're like are, Robert are you okay he's like yeah he, he was kinda, just like really like, you know it's it's his world and obviously he understands that there's moments but he loves he you know he created this whole show 20 years ago and so I bet it's still like hard for him to see it like go away. He mumbled. He was like, well, "We can always bring it back." Yeah. Right? So you never know. You never we know what's gonna happen. You know, our showrunner Carlos has also said, "Yes, we blew up the the bar, right? But the temple is always gonna be there. It's always gonna be the ruins are gonna be there. Maybe maybe a character would come, 
and resurrect it in the future. We'll, we'll see but what also happens. It's, like, it's like a good, it's cool that, that we just blew the damn thing up practically, you know? And that, again, I think that's one of the really cool things about this show and we're all very excited about and proud of is the fact that, you know, Robert very much carries the torch of doing things old school, you know, doing things practical. And, you know, with technology today, it's so easy to, to CGI something or just make shortcuts. So any chance we get, um, we just blow stuff up. We do all our stunts as practical as possible. Yeah, our you makeup, know, everything. Our makeup yeah. is, you know, Greg Nicotero and KMB. Well, these guys primarily, I just, I shouldn't even talk about it because I don't have to sit in the makeup trailer. But, you know, say, you, you, yeah, tattoo. I complain <laughs> about my tattoo. tattoo. <laughs> they spend four hours before and after. Is that work. how long it takes? Four hours? Sometimes. Before and after? Uh, Yours is like, shorter, like right? Two, sorry, yeah. microphone. I'm like two hours. She's like four. Because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in a suit, so I only have to do my face, but she and ends I'm up in doing the like full body bikini. thing. So. so it's like my whole body. No, yeah, and first season it took four hours exactly because I had the whole, like, strip her outfit or whatever. And this season it's been so much better because, thank God, our our amazing Nina, who takes care of our our dresses or whatever, she was like, we'll cover you up a little bit more. I'm like, thank you. (laughs) Yeah, so now I don't, because I used to have, like, the stomach piece and then scales all over the legs. But these guys are artists. I mean, honestly, like, I always, every time I can, I try and, like, give them a shout-out because these guys are brilliant. They do hand-paint every single scale on my body. They do it. They don't have, like, a pre-done snake kind of thing they kind of have to do it from scratch every time we go through and they yeah, nail it freehand you you can tell and that's what's awesome you know robert and greg went back they started from dust 20 years ago with the original movie and they came back and they're like okay what was what worked what didn't work how can we fix it how can we mold it into the show and make it work um, with especially because of the mythology it's more of a ser- serpent kind of thing in this in this show so they, they killed it. They did such an amazing job. And it's just, it, you know when you see someone do paintings or watch art being made, it's literally for me, every time I would sit on that just chair, they, they're so passionate about what they do and the way they're so meticulously with every, like, it's just brilliant. And so... They let you keep your hair, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you remember, but in the movie, Sama obviously, Sama, bald. when she turns, she's like got the big. I was like, Robert, am I going to be bald? And... He's like, no. I'm like, <laughs> well, you also get like a free Halloween costume. You just show up to work and then yeah, you, can, man. Yeah. you can leave. For I'm the just going to take his glasses this year. <laughs> Done. I have a whole pass because I get to be ugly the whole year. So I yeah. can actually be pretty <laughs> in Halloween. <laughs> um, well, you know, speaking of makeup, there's also a lot of fake blood on the show. Uh, I can't even oh, imagine yeah. how Corn much every week. Everywhere. Yeah. Do you guys ever get sick of it, just getting all over yourself? And um, you have to drink it a lot too. Yeah. I got it in my eyes. Shot it straight in my eyes. Uh, I again, I, I get it. I have it really easy. Like I'll sit here and talk about all the work that Greg does, and 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 you know the 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 practical effects and the blood and stuff. But my character usually like like causes some trouble and then just dodges out of the way. So I don't have to deal with the makeup. I don't have to deal with the blood. I just, I, DJ, I should stop talking. DJ, <laughs> DJ skirts away from the fake blood when he can. There was a, a scene uh, earlier in the season. <laughs> you have to tell it. We're, uh, uh, we, we have this. No, first, it's called the guacamole gun, and it's this giant gun. It's an air cannon, and it's specifically to blast the blood so you get that splatter. And there's a shot in the first season where... It's when uh, Zane gets shot in the no, back. No, 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 no. Let's just <laughs> casually okay, let okay. me change the story. Yeah. So I'll get to me being an, a complete jerk too. <laughs> so Zane gets shot in the back, and then on camera you have the, sh- the shots on Aza's face, and the guacamole gun's gonna spray. She gets sprayed, and they're like, "Okay, are, are you ready?" She's like, "Yeah, I'm ready." Is it gonna be too much? No, no, no. And I'm it's just- like, "It's gonna be right here." And Robert's like, "Yeah, don't worry. It's gonna be on the chest." I'm like, "Okay, I'm full." Like with the eyes in and getting prepped to like turn into a <laughs> vampire and they go and they shoot it in slow motion too by the way motion. so the playback is is awesome. amazing <laughs> so I, so they so they shoot the gun and somebody's miscalculated the air pressure and she gets blasted in the face literally like you've in never my seen nostrils, in like, my eyes like like a bucket of blood, blood inside and she screams so loud like the whole the whole everybody behind the monitor went like ah. she no was, but ah. it was literally because for a second she was just pissed she wasn't i active. just got really offended i was really offended i was like 
I get hit because the gun was right here. It's not yeah. like it was far away. It was right here. And I was like, and then for a second I twitched. And I was like, I got to get back in the character. And so it's so funny to you watch in slow character. motion because my face is like, <sighs> <sighs> like yeah. I had to like snap real quick. It was so, so I remem- funny. So that moment scarred me. Okay. And I was afraid. <laughs> and then we had a scene in uh, the second episode of the second season where Maddie, when Danny Trejo shoots, uh, shoots Rafa. the gun, Rafa. shoots Rafa. Thank you. And uh, we get sprayed. So again, I see the, I see <laughs> our same special effects guy waving at me, holding the guacamole <laughs> gun. And he's like, just walk up and stand right there and I'll get you. He gives me the same line that he gave Aza. He's like, it's not going to be a lot. It's not going to be in the face. You're going to be fine. I'm like, uh-huh. Okay. So the take starts and I'm walking and as I'm walking, I'm supposed to tuck my gun in the back of my pants and I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. And then the gun starts to slip out of my pants. As soon as we get to the guacamole gun, it falls. And I instinctually, or maybe, I don't know, I just, it was perfect timing. I just so Maddie, duck out of the way. <laughs> Madison is right here over his Madison shoulder. Gets so it. he ducks out of the way. And, and she, she just gets the full blasted <laughs> in the face the same way she oh, did. And if you watch it on the monitors, it looks like I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm tough, I'm tough. I'm in no, I don't want to do this. I just get out of the way. <laughs> and she just, bam, she gets hit in the face. And she was so pissed. I pop up. I'm like, it's fine, guys. I'm clean. I can go again. No, I don't have anything on me. And Madison is covered, <laughs> covered in blood. So we have a lot of... Uh, Blood, fake blood related. Uh, we love blood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. Sorry, I'm starting to get a sense you're the prima donna of the set. <laughs> I, he's I, not, he's not. I would not. Ask him about the snakes, though. He no, loves don't ask snakes. me about the snakes. We don't need to talk about the snakes. <laughs> um, out of curiosity, why is it called the guacamole gun? Um, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't, know. I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's think, weird. It looks like a story. I think, it looks I think th- Robert came up with the term when they were doing um, his, not Desperado. Planetaire? No. Oh, when once upon a time in Mexico. Mexico. Once a time in Mexico. No, when they were doing El Mariachi, I think he said. Did they actually use a guacamole gun? They I don't even did. know what a guacamole gun if is. It's, if Robert says it's a guacamole gun, it's it a guacamole is a guacamole, guacamole, guacamole gun. Yeah. And that's it. He's from Texas. He knows. <laughs> Um, so some more exciting news this season uh, for the last three episodes, the upcoming three episodes. Demi Lovato will be a uh, special guest. Yeah, I heard uh, that. I yeah. Heard that. <laughs> also, uh, other big news: you are in her new music video, which debuted today. Thank you. I didn't know that. I wasn't on set, but I'm <laughs> very excited to be a part You're of it. You're in the, the video? video. Congratulations, yeah, DJ. That's awesome. No, that Zane actually. Oh, I can't. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Well, so I walk back to the green room, and they're, all three of them are staring at the phone, and they, they won't even look up. I'm like, what are you guys looking at? And they're obsessed with this Demi Lovato music video. She's gonna, she, she, DJ's his number one fan. He wears a <laughs> T-shirt that says Demi Lovato yeah. underneath. Um, so can you tattoos. tell us anything about, her, A, her role on the show, and then, B, your role in the music I, video? I don't know if we can say no. anything about her role it on the show, but they, it, they haven't really done a trailer or anything. But she does come on. Um, it was awesome. We, we had met her before. Um, it's cool to have her come. She was great. She was ends up playing Total a cool badass. kind of badass character, and I think people are gonna respond to it really well. And, and that's then, the thing Robert does well. I mean, you know, the, that's one of the things I love about him as a director is he'll take an actor that you're uh, any artist really that you're used to seeing in one light, and he'll flip it. You know, he does it with yeah, actors he did from the it past with, musicians. I mean, with Wilmer, he did it too. You he know, did it with Wilmer, he did it with Lady Gaga. He did it with you know endless amounts of performers, and and it's really cool to see Demi step up and do some some great stuff with uh, with Robert too. So I think her fans are going to be really really. That talks excited. about a good director. You know, he's not afraid of having just just because you in this industry you kind of sometimes get like if you do a very successful show or you do a very successful character. Um, other people may be scared of getting around it because y- you might be jaded. And Robert has never had that thought. Robert just sees you for who you are and your talent. And you walk in the room and you read the scene. And if you kill it, he doesn't care where you're coming from. You know, like he did it to me. I was coming from like soap operas and from Mexico, and I was scared. And I had, but he has a vision. You know, he sees you and he kind of like pictures you already. You know, he's a creative mind, and his world inside here is completely different from uh, us normal people, yeah, you know? So he pictures you, and, and that's what he's, he's created so many stars, you know? He saw George Clooney when he was starting, and he did it to him. Antonio Vendera, Salma Hayek. I mean, that's why he keeps on working with the same people. People love working with him, with him. Jessica Alba, um, Michelle Rodriguez, Danny, like everyone, just like Josh Brolin only says amazing things about him. You know, yeah. people really dig that. Yeah. 
But he's, he has such a strong uh, authorial voice and such a strong vision. Yeah, yeah. He's um, got the ultimate, like, movie trailer voice in yeah. real life. Yeah. And it's <laughs> funny. It get, you, I, I'm convinced. Like, I catch myself sometimes if I have a scene where I have to show any sort of, sort of a, excuse me, any sort of authority or, like, be intimidating in any way, which I'm not in real life, I'll catch myself subconsciously. I think I'm doing a Robert impression because he's got this, this cadence that is, uh, you know, so cool and authoritative at the same time so yeah. and the show obviously is i mean it's such a robert rodriguez vision i mean yeah. it's just it's out there and it's you know uh it's out really crazy scenes every week how do you prepare someone new coming in like demi lovato or other guest actors how do they how do you kind of prep them for I mean, what they're about to walk into honestly it they, it's you don't need to yeah. look like robert I'll, i'm talking too much but robert works very quickly and like Aza said he has an instinct and he sees he's told us all stories about the reasons he casts people and and why and it's all very gut instinct and quick and that's how we shoot and um, he just like she said sees something in the performer and empowers them to make their own choices and and I really mean that like a lot I expect when I go to work with a prolific director you know okay I'm gonna be humble and I'm gonna do everything he says because this is his vision, but Robert very much, it's very much the opposite. He, he gives you free reign, and what he does is he watches you make your choices and then just frames them and gives you a safety net where you, you're always safe, you're always gonna look good and look cool and your performance is gonna be good. So, you know, before I, I came to this job, any actors I spoke to that, that worked with Robert told, they stopped me, and they're like, it doesn't matter the project, it doesn't matter the part, just go work with Robert, you're gonna feel very empowered and, and, and creatively it's going to remind you, wanted you why you wanted to do this in the first place. So it's, I think when people come on, that energy is infectious and Robert makes everyone feel very, very safe and empowered to do their best work. So you just dive in. Makes you feel safe until the guacamole gun is out. Yeah, he makes me. you yeah. feel safe until he shoots you with blood and, right. and Yeah, because it's like that <laughs> constant you. question that we would always get asked, like, what do you feel stepping into, like, George Clooney's shoes and blah, blah, blah. And it's funny because we never had that feeling on set because mm -hmm. Robert really did us, didn't put that pressure on us. He was like, come in, play with us, do whatever you think you're gonna do, enjoy it. And, and that's the thing, you know, you walk into Robert's world and you know, he's very diligent about the fact that he always wants to shoot in Austin. He likes to shoot at Troublemakers. And you walk in and it's a family environment. It really does feel like it. He's been working with the same people for, his, I mean, and when I say this, I talk grips, camera people, um, wardrobe, everything. It's just such a family that everyone that walks in there, it just you feel very, I mean, I can tell you in my own experience, I was really scared and very nervous. And, you know, I had all these doubts in myself, like, this is my first English-speaking role. I'm so nervous. I need to be on, like, on my A game. There's Don Johnson right there and these guys. And you know what I mean? And he just sat me down and he's like, you know what we did in the audition and you were, just do it, you know, just follow your gut, follow your gut and the character and the choices you made and they're the right ones because here you are. So he just makes you feel very comfortable. He just has this, like he said, just nice voice, very warm. He never raises his voice. He's like, yeah, 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 you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so that cool, you know, he's good. cool. And, and, and then you turn around and you're like, oh, my best friend Robert. And you're like, oh, no, he's still my he director. He feeds us. <laughs> but yeah, you know. We go, he, he cooks us pizzas. We hang out on the, on the weekends at his house and watch movies. And he cooks us amazing food. And it's, it's very, fam you know, we're, we're far from L.A. We're far from New York. And we feel, you know, it's, it's Troublemaker is his studio that he built. And, and, you know, it's a familial atmosphere. So you, we truly feel like we're making an independent movie. Like, yeah. it doesn't, there's no rules. Like, we're just... It's Having just fun. us and Robert like coming up with stuff and, and it's for me it's very jarring because it's such a it's such an unpretentious uh, vibe and attitude on set that when I watch the episodes and I see how crazy it looks, I'm always caught off guard because it doesn't you know what I mean? Like when you're on a big like movie, yeah. you feel it and it sh it takes forever. It's a slow shoot to get a tiny little piece. You feel the the, the size of it, but uh, in Austin, man, we shoot fast and we're, you know, it's a tiny family, so when you actually turn around and you watch and it looks so uh, epic, it's, it's a great surprise. Yeah. 
And it must also help just to build camaraderie on the set because you guys are away from New York or LA or you know, even your hometowns and you're all, because you, you, you stay in Austin for the entire season, you shoot the yeah. whole thing there together. Uh, that must you know, be a fun way to build camaraderie and also just to have some fun. Because <laughs> yeah, Austin's a yeah. great town. Austin's a great town, man. And, and we're very lucky to get to shoot there. It's, it's like a great balance of uh, small town and big city. Uh, the food's amazing. The music is amazing. And, uh, you know, we're also lucky creatively because our show takes place in Texas. Right. And it's very rare. Like, I mean, I've shot in New Orleans pretending I was in Pakistan, China, Wash, like you never get to shoot where your your show takes place, and um, I think that you know the aesthetic of it and just the vibe of being there, uh, it gets into it. And you're supposed to lie and say like, "Oh, I love my cast. We hang out all the time." And but you know, you always say that and you don't mean it. But in this case, we're all very lucky because we we actually do really get along and, and hang out. So so we love it down there. I'll ask one more, and then we'll go to the audience. Um, so obviously, you know you. You've deviated from the original movie now. There's no more uh, Twister bar, and there's kind of more of a unique universe than there was before. How's the fan reaction been? How are they uh, responding, like, especially the, the old-school cult favorite fans of, uh, of the movie? I mean, I feel like people are responding well to the second season. The, for us, creatively, for Robert, for Carlos, the showrunner, the goal was always to get here, to use the first season as a means to kind of reintroduce these characters, reintroduce the world, and then tell new stories. And that's where we're at now. We're, ha we're more than halfway through season two. We've blown up the titty twister. Um, you said it. <laughs> some, uh, some characters have come and gone, but this is where we were always trying to get, was to have the Gecko Brothers and Santanico and the Fuller family kind of exist in these new stories. We've brought in new characters, Ranger Gonzalez. You know, we're in this new universe for the show while still, you know, respecting what came before, but now we're here. This is what we were trying to get to. This is where we're at. Season two and beyond is was the ultimate goal for the show, and I think fans are responding to... I mean, anybody who's been watching it, do you guys like the second season? Or Yeah? But it's... I think it's... Look, I'm, I'm uh, the, one of the biggest problems I had coming on to this project is I'm a giant, giant Robert Rodriguez fan and a giant Quentin Tarantino fan. So y y when you have properties and characters and, and, and movies that you love, you, you, you have ownership over them. You know, and I'm that guy watching remakes or watching movies going like, nah, his hair's not right. No, that's, no, I can't, you know, I'm that guy. Like, and I, so I totally understand that, but I think it's a positive thing because... What it does is it shows passion for the characters. You know, this is a this is a film. These characters were originated almost 20 years ago, yeah. and that's a testament to Robert's work and to Quentin's work. And we love that. We celebrate we celebrate that these days. We want to see iconic characters more, and I think we see that a lot. We see reinterpretations of favorites we have more consistently now than ever. And I think audiences, myself at least, want the same from. Uh, Quentin's characters and Robert's characters. It's just nobody else has access to those guys except those two. So when they wanted to open it back up, um, I mean, as an actor and just as a fan, I, I just dive in, you know? So, I, so any reactions, positive, negative, I, as long as there's a passion behind it, I'm excited because it means that these characters mean something and that the stories mean something to people. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's the whole point. That's a good segue to uh, see what the people think. Uh, we'll take questions from the audience now. Hi, I'm Anthony. How are you guys? Hey, man. Hi. Okay, so um, you guys already mentioned how uh, it takes like about two to four hours for makeup, but what other kind of uh, preparation goes into each episode, like with um, rehearsal or how you sleep, what you eat, like stuff like that? Sleep. The sleep. <laughs> lack, oh, lack sleep. Hmm. Well, we don't it, know what that is. It's a vampire show, right? So <laughs> <laughs> for us, a lot. Of, I mean, me Almost and Aza everything. and I specifically. Almost everything is a night exterior shoot. So that means you start at seven. Five, eight. You may, maybe we show up at five to do makeup and everything, but you're there till five or six in the morning. So our sleep schedules were really Upside irregular down. and kind of not perfect. You know, I, I, I couldn't get my normal sleep pattern right. So I'd get home at five or six, but I would only want to sleep till 11 because I wouldn't want my whole day to be gone or just spent sleeping so so we're in the it, no sleep just zone <laughs> no sleep zone for the whole season um uh, great for beauty 
Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we age like they just, 40 years. They just slap the prosthetic face over yeah. on top. I mean, we just look like culebras instead. Um, what, what was the rest? The, the makeup, <laughs> rehearsal. sleep, rehearsal. Uh, we get into a pretty good um, sort of rhythm for rehearsal. We we were all staying in the same condos the last two seasons. so we It's, were, like, we it's were, like Melrose yeah, Place like, with blood. It is. So we were very close to each other. Um, anytime anybody would have a day off, we'd try and go over the material for the next day. Just, you know, like DJ said, we shoot really fast. So you have to show up and know know what you're saying and know what the scene is about. Otherwise, you, there is no time to kind of figure that out on the fly. So we try and, yeah. you know, TV is a very intense schedule. You you shoot a lot of pages and, you, and especially for us, you're almost, we shoot eight days and the three of us tend to shoot like, Seven. Six or seven yeah. out of eight. And it's so very you're verbose. There's tons of, like, you know. Yeah, and something important to say gymnastics. is that we have different uh, directors every episode. So that, you know, it, it, it's really interesting to see when you're shooting a show um, the different techniques of every director. Um, every single episode was different. There was some that liked to do table readings, others that wanted to do, you know, they would shoot with their cameras and see, like, it's just really interesting and fun to see. And, you know, for us, for this season, I think we all really got into the fact that we really wanted to do all, all of our stunts as much as possible. So that was also in the, and throw that in the mix, you know, we were up for hours of makeup and then when we had some uh, time of um, open we would go in and work with uh, the Dajnas who are the stunt team and we would work throughout the whole um, stunts and try to do it as much as best as possible and then go back and forth and so it is it is a very demanding show let me tell you something especially um, because it's a very exhausting subject as well, you know. You're you're dealing with dark energy. Like even though if, if you don't, you're talking about intense subjects all the time. We're talking about blood and murdering, and you know, it's just you know, it it becomes. And then we're on no sleep zone. There's a lot of energy, and but at the you end, end of feeling like an actual. Yeah, I, it, I honestly like I came back home and it took me a couple of months to like get back on track and like. Stop killing people. Look like a normal person and stop <laughs> killing people and like growling on the streets. No, but yeah, it took us a minute, but it's, I mean. But with the, all that being said, the this is, is great. Yeah, and this is the favorite job that I've had. Me too, so, by the way. Yeah, I mean, me too. So you know, exciting. Night shoots, whatever. We're having a great time and we hope to be able to continue to do it. Great so. food, also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Breakfast tacos. Yeah, I mean, guys, trust me, for me, it was really hard. <laughs> it's like, guys, we're going to go to barbecue. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I gotta be in a dress tomorrow. tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> it's like no, no. And Robert always says like facil to everything. Like everything's easy. I'm like, yeah, it's not easy to like see pizza being made in front of me and not eat it. Like it was just really fun. The the, the whole environment was great and the outcome was great. So we really enjoyed it. It's great. Thanks for spending the time with us today. Yeah, thanks for thank coming. you for being here. Early. Um, of the three of you, who do you think uh, is the one that spent the most time researching the whole vampire culture, and what did you do? Ooh. I was born with it, guys. <laughs> no, truly. Born. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. No, no, no. Honestly, they all did their job. I mean, I know a lot of it because it talks about the Mayans and the, and the Aztecs, and I'm Mexican, obviously. I studied that in first grade. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like first exam in school, talk about Aztecs and Mayans. But, <laughs> I mean... We all did. We all we all I had our, our our. I watched Buffy a lot when I was young. <laughs> um, I've seen Interview with the Vampire a couple of times. None of, none of those things I have like Mayans Blade, or Aztecs. Blade but continue. Series. I does that not count? None of no, that. dude, <laughs> not at all. You failed. I uh, I stayed away from it on purpose. Like I'm supposed to have disdain and ignorance for it in the show, so I use that as my excuse to just like double down on my lines. So I, so I don't screw up. So I learn every episode now. So you guys yeah. skipped the uh, Twilight chapter of vampire history? No, no, we leave that out. We try and... That's, oh, that's another thing. Like, <laughs> Greg Nicotero, who is obviously very prolific and well-known for The Walking Dead, and who started with Robert early on, you know, horror movies, horror shows, they're supposed to be horrifying, hence the title horror, you know? And I feel like they're so... Uh, they're so great, and we have, we have such an affinity for them that we don't want to let them go, so we try them in every possible genre. We're like, okay, all right, we're tired of straight horror, so let's, let's, 
try hybrid. That's, Romantic. We've Romantic gotten to the vampires. point where we're like, let's put him in high school, hit him with glitter, and 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 watch a romance. You know, it's <laughs> it's run the gamut. So one of the things we really love here is, and this is. It's in the heart of Robert's fandom and Greg's fandom and, and just the way they do things at Troublemaker. They have a real, all of our showrunners, they have like a really, uh, a love for classic horror influences, you know? So what's cool is we try and honor that when we get into, into the scary stuff. So, so it's very cool. To, and then, you know, we do that by keeping it practical and yeah. keeping it scary. And, and when we, when we change, away from we look like demons. Like, there's nothing attractive about it. We well. look... <laughs> if you're like into twisted things, uh, I guess maybe. I mean, the teeth are disgusting. They're like long and so skinny gross. and like see And the eyes. And there's like gums in between. It's really, really ugly. <laughs> I mean, there's no way to go wrong if you're wor working with Greg Nicotera. I mean, guys, have you seen The Walking Dead? Like, duh. It's not. It's not gonna be. It's easy for us. And you know, there's there's a space for everyone, and this is our space, our horror, and we wanted to stick with it. And there's no way to go wrong with the people that we're working with, you know? There's directors like, the director of Blair Witch Project came in to direct one of our episodes. Like, everyone that even comes in to, like, directing, what, in the, dire in, in the directing world yeah, is true. also into that genre, like, so it wasn't complicated, and everyone, and what I like about Robert is that he started young. He started um, being an independent filmmaker, and that's what he encourages as well. Um, you know, he could easily, I mean, have you seen the director's chair? He has a show where oh, no, he right. interviews every director in the world, the best of the best. Like, he could have anyone in a show directing. But what I love about him is that he really wants to bring new talent to the to the table. And he's done it with El Rey, you know, like, and and in such a, a brilliant way. He brought us in, you know. He believed in us, gave us the leads of a show, then started bringing this whole amount of amazing directors that are up and coming and young and like have a different view of things. And that's exciting, you know? We, I mean, good directors, we need more of them. So it's fun that, that he's creating this, this huge amount Pushing of massive people yeah. with yeah, talent, you know? We've had a really interesting balance of directors coming in that do and do not have horror backgrounds. Uh, one of the, Joe ha had not done any horror, really, oh. and he's he does amazing. His episodes are some of my favorites. And then, like she said, we had uh, Eduardo Sanchez, who directed um, Created Blair, Witch. Blair Witch Project. And then each season, we've kind of had a director who's... New. Done like Fede. a big feature. Fede directed The Evil Dead, and then this last season we had uh, Alejandro who directed right. One of the Dead. So every season we All get the dads. Uh, you got the dads. Yeah, covered. really cool. Every dead. type of dead. Really Everybody's cool dead. mix of guys that have like young new horror cred, and maybe guys that haven't really had that opportunity, but come in and do an amazing job with it. So yeah, we're, like he we're did really, the cast as well. Yeah. You know. Well, we're looking forward to seeing the rest of the season and hopefully beyond. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming, man. guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys.